Formula Moto G6 unboxing and first impressions coming up right now. Let's go to my unboxing and first impressions of the Motorola Moto G6 owned by Lenovo, but this doesn't really matter too much because the Moto G series has stayed the same regardless of who owns the brand and things like that. So the phone is basically the same as it's always been. It's a really great cheap Android device that's going to really give you mostly what you need to get the job done in your day-to-day -day tasks. So you can see Moto G6 on the side. And we've got these little like, you know, little lines inside the box. That's a simple box here. And on the rear, you can see that it'll tell you what's included in the box right here. Moto G4, a char or G6, I said G4, a charger, USB cable and guides. And down here, it'll say Motorola or Moto, the Moto branding, Qualcomm Snapdragon. This does have a 450 CPU and Motorola.com here. So this is gonna be a pretty hot budget phone this summer, I feel like. So I figure let's bring it to the channel. So let's go ahead and open this up and you can see Moto G6. Here it is. Now, this phone really goes with the trends here in 2018 because it's going to give you that narrow body glass rear at 250 bucks. Now, the closest thing to this phone or the next step up will be something like a OnePlus 6. And to be quite honest with you, the phone is actually a little bit more narrow, smaller, and feels almost as premium, if not just as premium, as a OnePlus 6 in terms of the body. But we know it doesn't have as fast of a processor, but it's still looking like a pretty nice device for 250 bucks here for the Motorola Moto G6. So let's go ahead and take that sticker off for a second and see how it sounds. Cause you know, some of these just don't sound quite loud enough. So let's go ahead and, okay, that one, that one was okay, but it wasn't amazing. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can see, hello Moto. So they're still using that branding. Over here, you can see Moto G6 guides. You know when we'll read this. I think I've said it enough in my unboxings before. Number two. So down here, you can see that we do have a USB-C charger. Finally, a USB-C to the Moto G series. Definitely needed that micro USB on the G5 Plus was getting old. Let's go over here. And you can see we have our charging brick right here, turbo power, fast charging. So nice stuff. Just your basics, a phone, a charger, and a cable. Okay, so it's starting to turn into a mess. So let's go ahead and get this stuff out of here. And let's focus in on the Moto G6. Look at that Cyclops looking lens right there. We got our Motorola logo right there below it. But a CE brandy. I don't see too much FCC brandy on here, if any, on the back. So a very clean look. Looks like we have a little microphone hole down here. It's gonna make for better call quality. At the bottom, we do have ourselves a USB-C and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. A fingerprint scanner right here, which is a lot like what you see on the Huawei devices. And no notch on this phone, earpiece, front-facing camera, some sensors, and it looks like a SIM card tray up at the top. So a very clean, just simple slab smartphone that does have the newer trendy narrow display. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up and see what we're working with here. The Moto G6, let me go ahead and lower the display time or raise it so it doesn't keep shutting off on us right here and take a look at what we're gonna get. So the Moto G6 here, definitely in line with the newer devices when it comes to its more narrow body. You don't have a notch here, but you do have face unlock, which is cool, and a fingerprint scanner. So you get both on here, and face unlock and a fingerprint scanner on a $250 phone, that's a pretty nice touch here. Now, of course, I think this is gonna have a little bit of lag. It's not gonna run quite as fast as a flagship phone. It shouldn't, but it does have four gigabytes of RAM and a 3000 milliamp hour battery. So that's nice to see. Scrolling down into the system settings, you can see that if we go to about phone, this phone does rock out with Android Oreo 8.0 out of the box. Now this might get an update to 8.1 if it hasn't already. And I'm sure that it's gonna be updated to Android P later this year. However, Moto hasn't been on the updates like they used to be quite as frequently, but still it's gonna run a pretty current version of Android for quite some time. Now, what I'm noticing right away on my first impressions is that this phone feels like like almost just like a OnePlus 6 from the rear. But what I'm noticing so far is that because you're not rocking with a, you know, OLED display, you can definitely see where corners had to be cut with this device. The display is an IPS LCD capacity touchscreen. So it's liquid crystal, you know, it's like the ones that are on, you know, iPhone 7, those series of devices. But 
probably not quite as well calibrated. It's still a very good display for the money. So I think this is nice that it's 1080p resolution. It gives you a high pixel density and has a 75.4% screen to body ratio. So viewing angles, probably not the best I've seen, but still, I mean, remember the price of this phone and take a look at it. It definitely looks like more than it costs. So of course, if we go into settings, you are gonna get your typical, you know, stock UI kind of look here. That's what Motorola goes for, but you do also get some of the Motorola features that you don't find on some other phones. Okay, so, okay, so let's go ahead and get into the Moto section. And here is where you're gonna find yourself a lot of the Moto enhancements that you don't see on other phones. So let's go over to features and you can see the Moto key right here you can see access websites apps and devices with your fingerprint so it's kind of like an autofill feature moto actions so under moto actions you're going to have different types of actions like quick screenshot for example you do have the one button nav the chop twice for the flashlight the twist for a quick capture swipe to shrink screen pick up to stop ringing and flip to do not disturb under moto display you're going to be able to use the night display the attentive display for face unlock and you do have moto voice here so there is a few features that are custom for the motorola we'll get into those in the review so i just wanted to showcase that moto's been doing that for a while so it's a clean software with just a couple of added features including the fm radio which is now supported for the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus as well. But overall, I think most people in this price range are really gonna enjoy this clean software. It is listed as splash resistant, so you know, a little rain's not gonna hurt this phone at all. A couple of shortcomings here are you don't have Bluetooth 5.0 on this device, that's reserved for a flagship, but let's go ahead and open up the camera and take a look and see how this camera looks on just, you know, let's just do a quick little photo. I got the BlackBerry Key 2 over here and let's see how this camera performs. Now, the BlackBerry Key 2 doesn't have a great camera either, but let's take a look at this one and see what happens. So, first shot, not looking bad, in good lighting, detail pretty strong. Um, we're going to go ahead and test out this more before the full review, but it looks pretty good for a budget phone so far. Motorola has made decent, never amazing cameras, but definitely decent enough to please, you know, the person who's probably in the market for a phone like this. But heading more into the camera, let's take a look at the features. You can see spot color, panorama, portrait, face filters, slow motion, time lapse, and some more face filters in the video mode. So let's go back into the camera and let's take a look at in the settings, what we have in the settings. So let's go over here in the settings and you can see you could turn off the shutter sound. You do have the ability to change the photo sizes on the rear and you do have the assistive grid. You can do video at up to 1080 60. So no 4K here, that's a real bummer here for this device, no 4K, because 4K is pretty much on every you know major league smartphone these days. So definitely that's a bummer, no 4K, because that's really strong video quality. So that's about it. First impressions, it definitely feels like a pretty good value for the money. Not one you have just in case you crack your phone, or if you're just looking for a really solid phone and you don't wanna pay even a $500 for a phone, this should be high on your list in the Motorola Moto G6. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining for me, click the like button for me. Any questions, comments, video suggestions, start dropping them down below as I prepare the full review.